Uh, hello, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Tang Tihtriol, our uh, advanced rate lecturer. So, my name is Sarah Azrin Minti Muhammad, uh, matrix number EGA140032. Uh, today, I'm going to present on uh, the pattern of trade application on Hesha Olin uh, theory, trade theory model, case study on Germany. So, I am going to compare between Germany and China in order to understand uh, what is the pattern of trade between these two countries. Okay, so initially for introductions, uh, Germany is well known for Europe's largest economy and fifth largest in the world. We are calculating on GDP uh, against uh, GDP uh, in uh, purchasing power parity terms. Okay, so uh, according to the uh, Federal Statistical Office, in Germany we say it as Statistisches Bundesamt. So in 2014, it says that the exports of goods and services accounted 40% of the GDP. Meanwhile, for import is 39% of GDP. With 81.2 million populations, Germany has around 42.7 million workforce. And the growth is at 1.6%. Meanwhile, inflation rate at 0.9%. So, uh, the chart shows Germany's major trading partners in Euro billion. We can see from the chart that the first uh, major export destination is France with 101 Euro billion. Following with US, UK, China is number 4 with 74 Euro billion euros. And uh, from this chart of the top 10 export destinations, only uh, you, uh, four countries are not the in Eurozone, which are US, UK, China and Switzerland. So we can see from this trade pattern, it turns out that Germany, most of the export destinations come from the neighboring countries. Well, uh, for the import, uh, most of the import come from, surprisingly, not China, is coming from Netherlands, uh, the neighboring countries. So I guess uh, this is because the Netherlands have uh, they are connecting a uh, very good facil, uh, infrastructure with road transports, and also uh, the Netherlands have uh, very well known for the Rotterdam port, and uh, it's very near, and they don't have the barriers to trade. Okay. And uh, China is the second uh, importer to Germany. We can see from the trade pattern, it turns out that Russia is also, uh, we, uh, Germany also import uh, goods from Ras Russia, uh, Poland and Italy. Okay, uh, the next uh, slide will be uh, five uh, top commodity descriptions. For Germany, we can see here that most of major export and imports by divisions of Germany's production is based on the highly skilled labor. We can see here that number one is with 203 million euros. Number one is the motor vehicles, trailers and semi-trailers. For example, we have MAN. Uh, MAN in Malaysia, the factory is in Rawang. Man produces all the bars, the tractors for heavy industries, machinery and equipment, all those wash, we can see kitchen, whatever the products for factories are produced, uh, mainly uh, ex the export product by German. Chemicals and chemicals product, uh, uh, computer, electronics and optical product and also basic pharmaceutical products. So the trade pattern here, the export compared to the import is major dominant. You can see the difference between the export of motor vehicles. For example, we have Ma, we have Bo, uh, we have uh, Audi, we have BMW, we have Mercedes, uh, several uh, uh, journals and textbooks from our main textbook recruitment. So, in order to understand trade pattern, I apply Hesher Olin model to country case study in Germany. So, who is Hesher and who is Olin? Both of them are Swedish economists. Even Olin is a uh, 
Nobel Prize winner in 1977 for economics. So, according to Hesher Oli, it explained on the trade pattern based on differentiations of factor and demand. So, basically, what is differences in factor and domains? So, it says that differences in labor, labor skills, physical capital, land, and other factors of production. So, uh, in to know on labor skills, we have uh, unskilled labor, semi-skilled labor, and also highly skilled labor. So, on the key assumptions of Hesho model, they have they assume that the country will produce with constant return to scale and also that technology is the same across country. So Krugman agrees. Krugman and Maurice Oxwell in his book, uh, International Economics, agrees that with the Ricardian and HO model neglect the role of economies of scale. They assume that every country will tend to have an increasing return to scale. For example, if you have 10% of input, your output will produce for more than 10%. So we say it as increasing return to skill. Donnell 1995 also claimed that technology matters. So in a nutshell, I can say that we cannot assume that the technology is the same across country. Even the poorest nation, Africa, has lack of technological advancement comparable to the Germany with the advanced nation. So, data analysis and discussion. So, these are the German top 10 exports to the world. Mainly machines, transportation, miscellaneous on other goods, chemicals, metals, wood, food product, plastic or rubber, stone and glass, and also fuels. It turns out that Germany... Satu, dua, tiga. So, uh, I continue back. This is... Uh, this photo shows... Uh, major uh, commodity products produced by Germany. So uh, we can see from the photos that most of the vehicles, uh, the tractors and even Bosch, uh, the Bosch uh, advertisement, this is not the factory. This is a flyover in our way to Stuttgart. Okay? Yes. Because a Bosch yes. is a city, uh, Stuttgart is the city for Bosch, for Porsche, for uh, Mercedes. Even we can see that the taxi drivers are driving the Mercedes. So uh, these are the products for pharmaceuticals medicine. Okay, Rasiofarm is a medic uh, uh, um, a medicament product. In other words, Rasiofarm is a medicine, a brand name for medicine. The locations for this factory is located in Um, where we live before. So I took this photo because it's so close to my heart. I even cycle in front of the factory. Uh, Rossio found 100 Zeptions. So it shows that 100 Zeptions new. It, it, it doesn't mean that you have the uh, 100 tablets. It only contains 10 tablets. Huh? 10 tablets for babies. Even my youngest son can cure the fever within 24 hours. So innovative medicine, I can say. Okay, alright. So uh, these. Uh, this is the graph for top 10 Germany exports to China in 2014. Uh, again, I would like to stress out that among these top 10 uh, exports to China, number one is vehicles with 28.8 US dollar, uh, billion dollars. Machines, electronic, there are a significant difference here between machines and electronics. So top 10 Germany's import from China. So we would like to know what are the products produced and exported by China to Germany. So number one is electronics equipment. I guess this is so because uh, the electronic equipment and machine, engine and pumps can be as an intermediate good to produce the final goods. We can see that German import mostly clothing, furniture, Need or crochet clothing because Germany is a four season country, so it's very cool. Even in uh, in autumn, you can feel the breeziness of the strong wind. So you need all those knit clothing, medical, technical equipment, toys and games, footwear, organic chemicals, iron or steel product. It turns out that the toys and games 
it reflect me because I have two small children in the toys made in uh, China mostly come from the plastic however the design come I still remember the brand of brother I bought we bought a, a, a car a truck because my boys prefer to buy the truck so the toys and games although it's product the productions from China how, because it is a brand German brand name so it still lasts longer and heavy duty I would really suggest you to buy brother toys eh? very highly quality products so again here uh, mostly Germans will import the labor intensive uh, products which is clothing you need a lot of labors, a lot of labors in order to sew, to cut your clothes, your textile, to uh, it's like a very miscellaneous, very meticulous huh? furniture and all those picnic and crochet clothing. So again, we want to compare between Germany and China the trip Okay, from 2011 to 2012 and 2011 to 2013, the population of Germany is around 80. 1.8 in 2011 or oh, in order in 2014 as of July 2014 they have 81.17 million population however out of that the labor force huh? labor force comes from for those employed and unemployed they are coming from labor force and productive labor force sorry uh, the labor force is 40, around 42 million compared to the labor force in China surprisingly China has not 1 million this is you have to times by 3 this is 1.354 billion population we can see that uh, despite of the one child one family policy they are so productive to produce children so good that I'm so happy that people always love to have so many families in the family so many children in the family families. So out of this 1.3 billion population in 2013, the labor force is 801 uh, million. Okay, so uh, we get this, I get the statistics from the statisticians Bundes Arm. Bundes means the Federal Republic of Statistics. Uh, federal, uh, German, Germany is capital financial. We take it from the statistic they have in China 4.342 million. And I calculated it to uh, capit uh, to the labor capital over labor capital against labor force. So capital per unit labor force will be five four five thousand four hundred and sixteen. So uh, the comparison between gross fixed capital uh, capital per unit labor force, we can see that I think there is an error here. Uh, I, I cannot explain much on this 2011. However, for 2012 and 2013, you can see that the ratio of capital over labor is increasing from 2012 to 2013. Okay, we can see a significant difference of capital per unit labor force between Germany and China. 16 and 16,000 and 4,012. Okay, so it shows that Germany is a capital abundant nation, capital abundant country that they can produce all those capital intensive products. Uh, comparable to China, they are labor abundant with 1.3 billion population, so they are producing all those labor uh, pro uh, intensive products. So this is the discussions that we know uh, there is a quote that Germany needs the market from the bigger population of China. Men, China needs the technological, the know-how, the expertise from Germany. So the comparison trade pattern between Germany and China, we can see that the level of income according to OECD, Germany is a high income nation. Even the cleaner earns can you guess how much Dr. Tang? 400 euros. It's so expensive, so happy that they can only work for 20 hours per week, part time basis. Even the kitchen itself, the minimum wages is 400 euros. In China, according to OECD, is upper middle income. Factor endowments, we can see that Germany has a capital abundance uh, uh, with the strength of the highly skilled labor force. China, labor abundant, 1.3 billion populations, semi-skilled and low-skilled workers. 
So again, this is the photos. I mean, uh, uh, to produce a BMW car, you can see a very clean uh, factories, and they have uh, to produce this uh, high impact, uh, capital intensive factories, high innovation, high high risk R and D, and this is the labor intensive industry in China producing textiles, textiles, clothes. Huh? So happy that they have a rainbow and love for the young. Huh? Okay. So, uh, what are the lessons learned on Germany that I can gain from this assignment is on the excellence of force due to the voca vocational qualifications which is above OECD average 67%. Even most Malaysians that uh, that we met in Germany, mm. all of them are uh, studying for mechatronics, electronic, mechanics, automotive, and all those uh, engineering uh, field of science and technology. Uh, they don't emphasize much going to the uh, univers elite universities such as Harvard or Oxford or Cambridge. What they emphasize is that the young generations, uh, the students itself have to have a combination technical and theoretical education from the secondary level, Fachhochschule or uh, Polytechnics. Uh, in other words, Polytechnics. Number two is innovative power. Europe is the number one location for R&D, excellent manufacturing and product quality. Always remember that uh, uh, made in Germany product come out with, uh, they are very attentive to details, they are very productive, they are very... Uh, even the products, whatever products that we bought, for our kitchen equipment, for example, that we bought the VMF, uh, Bosch. Uh, I, I I used to to bake last time when I was I was a stay at home mother, so I always to bake and it, it, it still function well even if we bought the second hand products. Huh? okay. So number three is first class infrastructure. First class infrastructure, for example, they have uh, a very good road transport where the autobahn or the highways don't have the toll and the, they don't have any speed limit if you drive in Germany and uh, the because of this first class, class infrastructure uh, we can see that in every state that the trucks coming over 24 hours a day 7 days a week commuting daily and it's very safe uh, road transport. Another one that they have is a uh, Hamburg port uh, in uh, north of uh, Germany, uh, and also they have uh, two main airports, Frankfurt and also uh, Munich airport. Okay, so but mostly most of the trading comes uh, within the Euro region. We can see that uh, lots of trucks and trailers coming over 24 hours a day, okay? Inviting incentive, uh, they are inviting the foreign investor to come over and invest uh, in Germany. Competitive tax conditions and also high productivity with technology driver. So despite of labor abundance, despite of the capital abundance, what a nation can grow faster ultimately is because of the technology driver. Okay. Uh, so in this case for Germany, they don't have as much populations like in China with 1.3 billion. They only have 82 billion, 82 million population. However, with this 82 million population, they are trying to encourage as much skills, expertise, experience and knowledge in their uh, uh, people. So in conclusion, the trade pattern in Germany is consistent with Asia or in India. Germany with highly skilled labor force and capital intensive will export the capital abandoned products, machines, vehicles, chemicals, uh, all those electronic goods. And Germany will Germany is the home country, the home country 
German, you import clothes and footwear, which is a labor intensive from China. And this is consistent with the trade patterns that I have shown before. So with trade, everyone is better off. Uh, Germany can export all those machines for the production in China and at the same time Germany can also benefit from the clothes made by Chinese people. Okay, with thread everyone is better off. Thank you very much. I wish uh, Dr. Tang um, uh, a good day and thank you.